Continuing this fascinating discussion of health care with our distinguished guest, Dr. Gaina Pillsbury, we learned in the last segment how health care costs are high, almost 17% of GNP, $6,000 per person. And one of the reasons is illustrated in this chart, which shows the cost of the same procedure in different venues. And this huge bar here is the emergency room. That's where it's most expensive, much less than in a doctor's office, in a, medic, uh, in a PPO or an HMO. And the reason, obviously, that so many people go there is where you don't have insurance, they get free treatment in the emergency room, but the cost to the system is so much larger. Right, hospitals have to take care of everybody that shows up on their doors, and many of them have no insurance or they're underinsured. And this particular slide actually is from an article in a peer-reviewed medical journal comparing the outcomes of treatments of common conditions. And it's much, much less expensive in an outpatient setting, but you have to have insurance. If everybody had insurance, they, not so many would go to the emergency rooms. And the costs overall, talk about reducing costs of medical care, this is one way that can't be done. Now, hospitals are a business like anything else, even though they're nonprofit, and they have to at least break even, if not make some money at the end of the year. And this fascinating chart shows reimbursement rates. And where this line is, if I can point to it, uh, right here, right there, that, that green line is 100% reimbursement, but different components get paid differently. The hospital gets less than the full cost from Medicare, from Medicaid, and therefore they have to, and of course they get nothing from uh, uh, poor, yeah, and therefore they have to overcharge, let's go back to the chart, they, can, they have to overcharge uh, uh, preferred provider organizations, the two bars on the uh, side over here. This is over reimbursement, uh, individual patients, or preferred provider pay more than real cost, of course others are paying less. So the system is kind of screwed up. That's right, and let me show that again. Well, I want to all explain it in that actually, those are, those are costs, that green line was actually what it costs the hospital to produce to provide care. And in California last year, actually hospitals in general lost $4.8 billion on Medi-Cal under, re under reimbursement. They lost $3.8 billion on Medicare under reimbursement. And many have had to close. And some have had to close. Uh, hospitals that are large, like ours, can actually negotiate better contracts with the HMOs and the PPOs and make up for it by cost shifting. But this, this is a crazy system. Okay, let's get to the new health care legislation, what we're all been waiting to hear about. Uh, your view of... The, you think it's a good thing that we passed this health care legislation? I think it's a good thing that we've done something. Uh, because where we were before uh, was just we were just stuck. And it's not like this is just a, suddenly the, all these things happen. They've been going on for years and nothing's been done about it. And what the new health care law does is it challenges us. It challenges those of us in the private sector of hospitals and doctors to work together and to reduce our costs and to, pro and to provide more affordable care to everybody. The good doctor has been nice enough to write a guest column in the newest issue of the Straight Talk magazine, which is now out on the street. And in the doctor's guest column, you state, to quote you to you, <laughs> we must change the way we deliver care and not just tinker with the way it is paid for. That's right. We have to develop better ways of providing the care, more cost-effective ways of providing the care, because otherwise, uh, with the payment, and we don't change the way, we already still keep ordering too many tests. Okay, and, and how does the new health care legislation do that? Well, it has a number of demonstration projects. Now, I think it's, it's appropriate to say that many of these are not going to come into effect for a few years because it's going to take time to plan. And the good thing for the doubters is that there is time to make some adjustments. You know, in the Medi when Medicare came about, why there were a number of uh, correcting amendments that were added that made it a much better bill. 
And the same thing I anticipate is going to happen here. We've got an election next November. We've got an election in two years. And that's kind of before because it's 2013, 2014, when most of the significant changes are going to occur. But some of the benefits kick in right away, such as what? Some of the benefits kick in right away. For example, those of you who have children graduating from college this year uh, actually can continue the kids in college uh, after they graduate until age 27. Okay. When our kids graduated, we didn't have that, so we had to go out and buy individual policies for them. But the real change is most of them don't kick in to 2014, and some of the real costs don't kick in until 2014. That's right. That's right. I, I might just comment a little bit on a couple more things of the benefits, because some of the goodies, as I already said, are up front. Like, for example, those of you that have Medicare, there's a so-called donut hole. And there's an effort to actually reduce that donut hole after you've paid a certain amount into the Medicare prescription plan. And that's going to be closed completely by the time to It's not unlike Congress to provide the benefits up front and kick the pain down the road. That's exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. But another, another emphasis is going to be a huge emphasis in the future on preventive care. Yes. And part of the bill is actually so there's no deductible, so you get free colonoscopies and all the recommended preventive and care. And that makes a lot be, of sense. Makes a lot of sense. An ounce of prevention pound the cure. Im improve health as well as reducing the cost. Okay, we'll be continuing this conversation. Stay with us. You won't want to miss the next segment. Phil Trainees mixes California style with continental cuisine that includes fresh seafood from around the world. Since Phil is the chef, the menu has a wide variety of pastas, salads, soups, and appetizers that feature his unique personal touch. And the Italian-American signature dishes are simply beyond delicious. You never know who you're going to run into at trainees, from the famous sports legends on the Wall of Fame to local celebrities having a drink at the bar. For the best fine dining experience, visit Phil Trainees. At Performance Plus Tire, you'll find we carry Toyo tires. For over 50 years, Toyo has been a world leader in the development of high-quality tires. Optimum performance, safety, and a comfortable ride. That's what makes Toyo tires great. And now come into Performance Plus Tire for a great deal on these Toyo tires. Proxies ST, Open Country AT, and Proxies 4. Toyo tires, driven to perform. Come in today and we'll install new Toyo tires on your vehicle while you wait. Performance Plus Tire on Cherry Avenue, one mile north of the 405 in Long Beach. When I was a boy growing up in Italy, I had a dream to own my own store. I came to the United States and I worked hard as a tailor. Hi, I'm Umberto. I've been in Long Beach since 1960, carrying the finest quality men's clothing. It was a long way away, but styles are just around the corner. Umberto, 2141 Belfar, Long Beach. <laughs> 